Thank you so much. Okay, so um, a few further housekeeping pieces before we dive straight into our agenda today. In terms of ways to connect, um, there are a few of our links. There's our email address, our website, and of course, Twitter. And just so that you are aware, um, we would love you to join in on our newsletter. So that's where you'll be, you can find out more information about MAP and our engagement in the World Conference next week. Our final thank you to our funders, that's the Arts and Humanities Research Council and the Global Challenges Research Fund here in the UK. And as we're thinking about the World Conference, which is happening next week, we wanted to share with you our sense of how MAP connects to the themes of the World Conference. And in particular, these areas are around access and inclusion, contextual education and cultural institutions, resilience and well-being, lifelong and life-wide learning, and culture and education policies. So these themes in the in the conference next week, you will hopefully see um, occurring throughout the presentation today. We will be taking you through an introduction from Ananda, the principal investigator of MAP, and then we'll be thinking about co-creation. Hi, Ananda. We'll be thinking about co-creation with you in the MAP project. As we know, co-creation is a big theme in the World Conference happening next week and the framework that's to be endorsed there. We'll also then be bringing in specifically our work with Beanard, who you can see there um, from Kathmandu University. He's the head of the STEAM uh, department in at at Kathmandu University's education department. And we'll be looking at the work in MAP that has started around national frameworks for art education in Nepal and touching on a local curriculum piece of work, which we're also engaged with. We'll then be looking at learning experiences. So this is a big concept in the framework uh, for the World Conference on Arts Education. And particularly in terms of MAP, ways of engaging artists, youth researchers, policymakers, and practitioners. So we'll be looking at how MAP is directly relating to many of the themes in the framework that will be endorsed next week. And finally, we'll touch on future directions and Ananda will take us a bit more and will talk to us a bit more in terms of the work that's happening in Rwanda and specifically connecting to uh, the national youth mental health policy there. So without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Ananda. Uh, Ananda is a professor in theatre at the College of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences here at the University of Lincoln in the UK, and she's our principal investigator. So welcome, Ananda. Love to hand over to you now to walk through an overview of MAP. Thank you so much, Sarah. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for being here. And in particular, a big thank you to the children and young people, educators, artists, and decision makers who have informed the design and delivery of the Mobile Arts for Peace or MAP approach to arts and education and to our partnering organizations, including UNESCO, who has served as a core partner from the inception of the project. A huge thank you and many thanks to all of you for joining. In terms of the aims and objectives of MAP, we initially aim to influence curricula and approaches to working with in and out of school youth to address global challenges, and also to create a two-way form of communication between children and young people and decision makers in relation to the issues that are important to them. Slide. To date, we've worked with over 185 partnering organizations, delivered 661 engagement activities, produced 184 artistic products, and those ranging from films, comics, theater productions, uh, music, um, and also a range of local cultural forms that, again, have been adapted for dialogic purposes. So using arts 
as the method to collect data, to analyze data, and to disseminate our data and findings. Involving more than 21,000 youth participants and researchers and 800 policy and decision makers. Slide. Here is a timeline of MAP activities from 2020 to present. In phase one of the project, we worked with young people, educators, and artists to explore the adaptation of local cultural forms for dialogic purposes then created manuals and toolkits that were piloted in school and out of school settings. Youth participants became youth researchers and facilitators and evaluators as part of our MAP clubs and in the leadership of 32 youth-led research projects. Based on the findings from the youth-led research projects, eight medium grant projects of 50,000 pounds, two commission projects of 25,000 pounds, and two large grant projects that covered monitoring, evaluation, and learning um, were funded 100,000 pounds each that were launched to enable a two-way form of communication between young people and decision makers to explore issues of importance to children and young people and to explore solutions to those problems from local to regional to international levels. Slide. In terms of informing curriculum, we map the local approaches to inform curriculum to embed curriculum into HEI structures as an example informing CPD programs. We developed youth leadership through in-school MAP clubs and researcher clubs that then evolved into the training of healthcare facilities and hospitals as part of our Mobile Arts for Peace at Home online psychosocial support through the arts in Rwanda project that has now informed the use of creative forms and arts-based methods as part of the mental health with and for children in Rwanda policy. Additionally, networking with cultural artists to develop resources, which has then guided national structures of youth leadership in terms of child, forum and child forums and ministries of education, particularly in Indonesia. Slide. In terms of informing policy, we've explored the role of cultural forums for dialogue uh, providing evidence-based data in terms of the importance of using arts-based approaches, in particular in terms of the work in Kyrgyzstan and also in Rwanda, exploring some of the gender dimensions and dynamics of culture and how that can be used uh, in terms of advocacy and gender equality. Additionally, understanding local and cultural approaches to healing really working with children and young people as individuals with lived experience to co-produce resources and approaches, and networking with local and regional decision makers and CSOs to create pathways for impact. In this way, we've been conducting policy roundtables in each country, working with UNESCO in particular in Nepal, um, and developing local to national curriculum in terms of arts education embedding decision makers and policymakers throughout the MAP journey. Slide. In terms of some of the challenges and opportunities we've faced to date, um, it has been a challenge at times to engage high-level officials with arts-based methods, noting the importance of how arts-based methods enables a more equal platform of communication where young people are able to express themselves in their own way um, through both affective and effective methods and platforms. Also trying to find a sweet spot between formal and non-formal modes of communication and education and policy informing structures and to continually adapt and progress the methods from local to national levels. So in particular, this has been very successful in terms of working with local child clubs 
and local decision-making structures that then inform regional and national decision-making structures and policies, particularly in terms of curriculum and arts education. Thank you very much. Passing it over to you, Sarah. Great, thank you very much, Ananda, for that overview. We'd now like to turn to thinking a bit more about co-creation as that's an important theme in the framework at the conference next, next week. So in terms of MAP, um, we would now like to explore how co-creation is developed and, and enacted in different parts of our, our work. So in this session, Ananda and I will just briefly introduce MAP's main key themes and approaches. So MAP works through the notion of everyday peace building through the arts. And the ways that we do that are shown in the three little pink blobs that you can see in our diagram. So the blue one in terms of advocating for progressive education, the yellowy gold one in terms of tackling child and gender-based violence, and our red paint blob in terms of thinking around well-being and mental health. So these different themes have emerged as ways that we try to inform everyday peace building through the arts across all the projects uh, that MAP is currently engaged with. And how do we do that? Well, we do that through different processes, and that's shown in the diagram um, in terms of championing Indigenous knowledge. So we try to work with indigenous forms of knowledge as much as we can, and in terms of gender inclusion and diversity, as well as intra and intergenerational dialogue, which you'll hear more about later um, today. We also to participate in actual research, and you'll see Dewey, who's one of our youth advisory board members, um, and a really strong advocate in terms of the work that we do with young people and led and champions. So you'll hear from, from Dewey later on. And also thinking about applied art and cultural practice. So not just adding art into um, the work we do, but starting with the art forms and trying to follow the art forms through the way uh, that we seek to answer our research questions and have impacts. I'll now hand over back to Ananda just to take us through some of the snapshot case studies that we have across the different countries that we work with, which relate to these different themes. So in terms of the first one, we're thinking around education and discussing the Beyond Tradition project, which is in Indonesia. So over to you, Ananda. So in terms of the Beyond Tradition project, there's a cultural form called Lenong, which is a folk form um, which in integrates uh, musical theater and martial arts and folk or um, mythology. Uh, it can be similar to a method um, called form theater, a, a Gusto Boalian method that's used quite a lot. Um, in terms of applied performance and also international development work um, in which the form itself is improvisatory <clears throat> and enables the audience to explore issues of importance to them and as a dialogic framework. So in terms of the adaptation of Lenong, young people have been working with artists um, in Jakarta in terms of working with Batawi cultural forms and exploring kind of the adaptation of Lenong, working with um, the youth of today in terms of trying to understand how it might be adapted um, to communicate issues of importance to them. And also in terms of considering cultural heritage and Lenong as a cultural heritage form, it's being used to inform local curriculum as well in Jakarta. And here in this next slide, um, it notes that there's also a training module 
that's being developed in terms of informing the local curriculum and that our partners have been working with the education office and the cultural office of Jakarta in terms of exploring how uh, Batawi culture can be used um, to engage local curriculum, but also in terms of how it can be seen as an advocacy tool for young people to also be a part of child forums um, and forum policy uh, at a national level. Yeah, great, thank you, Ananda. And we've started to talk a little bit about the importance of how we work uh, with young people. And we just want to mention at this point that there is a really strong and powerful role of the Youth Advisory Board. And in this image, you can see them actually engaged in, in relation to our monitoring and evaluation and learning processes. In this particular image, it, they're working on one of our MEL tools, which is called the River Journey. Um, here you can see the use of drawings, but in terms of our MEL tools, we have a really extensive piece of work that's being led by the universities of Northampton and Edinburgh. And Vina will kindly drop in the chat some further links to how we work both with the YAV and with our MEL resources that are on our website, so you can learn more there. But essentially, our YAB, our Youth Advisory Board, is made up of three to four young people, diverse young people, um, from each of the countries aged 14 to 24. It's our way as an applied research project of being not only committed, but also trying to explore and improve how we work with young people people and it's an evolving process so we hope that we're contributing and also learning from many of you that already are engaged and working with young people in different ways um, but it's a key and important piece of how MAP works. We'll now move on to um, sharing a little bit around the theme of gender-based violence and here we have an example from Kyrgyzstan. Thank you Ananda. In Kyrgyzstan, uh, the partners, including Foundation for Tolerance International, have been working with children and young people in over 18 child clubs in Kyrgyzstan, uh, you, working with young people as researchers to collect evidence in terms of the issues of importance to them. Predominantly, the issues have related to migration, um, and also in relation to gender-based violence. And primarily in terms of gender-based violence, um, what emerged was that a lot of girls um, are not supported in terms of continuing their education. There is one particular film in which uh, a young person shared her story um, about trying to continue her education and, and some of the challenges she faced. Um, that story was performed um, in the school and a, a lot of the audience members were actually mothers. And following the performance, there was an outpouring of stories from the mothers in terms of some of the challenges that they had faced in relationship to home life or schooling or um, kind of cultural, societal challenges as well. And both uh, the, the children and the mothers had expressed the importance of, of seeing kind of the, the mirror between um, in terms of experience and the importance of interventions, um, not only of, of the mothers and families, but societal interventions in terms of the school and also in terms of of NGOs and local decision makers and religious leaders who also were attending that event. Um, so that, that's one example of how arts-based methods have been used to explore issues and the importance of community engagement, family and community engagement in terms of addressing those issues. Yeah, lovely. Thank you, Ananda. And here we're just wanting to share some of the feedback from different types of adults 
that we work with, whether they're policymakers, teachers and parents. And actually some of our early findings are starting to show the importance of everyday peace building in, in, in relation to building family, uh, family uh, unity and peace building at the family level. So here we can see some quotes from Kyrgyzstan relating to a head teacher over there on the right, um, talking about the relationship between parents and schools being improved. So that's an interesting aspect to how intergenerational peace building, everyday peace building can have an impact. We'll now just move on to the third area around mental health and well-being. Um, and I'll pass back to you, uh, Ananda, to speak a little bit about our amazing work in Rwanda. So it was the time of, of um, COVID and I received a call from one of, one of our co-investigators of the MAP project from Rwanda, Chastu Orhore, from a, an organization called Wasinga Niamanzi. And he said, Ananda, we need MAP now more than ever. It was the time of the anniversary of the genocide, uh, the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda. And the government had enforced um, everyone to basically uh, be in their bubbles and it was locked down. And there was a wave of trauma of uh, flashbacks to the genocide itself. And a lot of individuals were not able to receive support, mental health support um, from service providers. Additionally, there were a lot of vulnerable groups who did not have access to mental health provision. And, and overall in Rwanda, there has been um, limited engagement with mental health services. And some of that is seen as perhaps the more Western approaches to um, mental health services may not uh, be as conducive to uh, the culture and context in Rwanda. And so working with the Rwanda Biomedical Center, which is the leading health center in Rwanda, um, and other partnering organizations, um, we co-produced resources and approaches to using arts-based methods um, to engage um, children and young people, street-connected youth, young mothers, and former drug users um, to engage in the Map at Home project. It, the title in full is is Mobile Arts for Peace at Home, Online Psychosocial Support Through the Arts in Rwanda. So through co-production, we developed uh, an approach to using arts-based methods for individuals to share their experiences and to share stories in relationship to feelings and experiences and challenges that might be faced um, during the time of the pandemic. And also to create a space where mental health service providers were then linked with possible mental health service users. This was conducted through both online platforms as well as an online mental health curriculum that was developed um, through arts-based workshops, participatory workshops, and also follow-up sessions that were conducted between uh, mental health service providers um, with and for the participants of the project. All of the participants were given mobile phones and training in terms of using the mobile phones um, for connectivity and to link to the Zoom workshops. Um, and were also funded in terms of receiving data bundles and otherwise. Um, following on from the Map at Home project, there's been training in over 53 health centers and 45 hospitals in Rwanda. As I had stated earlier in our presentation, um, the methods and approach and resources has also been used to inform national level training of mental health service providers and also um, the mental health in schools resources and policies as well. Following on from the Map at Home project, there's been sub projects that have built on the foundation of the exploration of mental health issues in Rwanda, such as the Visualizing Peace Project, in which three films were made by children and young people that were then screened um, to 
policymakers as well as uh, health providers. And a lot of the feedback from that event and those resources is how useful that has been to engage with the art space outputs and findings from those films that have been de developed by the children and young people, particularly in terms of exploring and addressing uh, issues around mental health and well-being from a youth perspective. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Ananda. And um, we're now just going to show a very short film clip, clip, which comes from our One Drum, One Girl project in Rwanda, which is helping to empower young girls through warrior dance um, art forms in Rwanda. So we thought that this would be a really nice way to convey those three themes all in one of addressing gender based violence, thinking around mental health and well-being and progressive education. So I'm gonna stop sharing and hand over to Veena. Um, and also if I can suggest afterwards, Veena, I think my internet connection is not fabulous. So if we pull up um, after the video, perhaps sharing from your slides, I think that would be a, a great way to go. So first of all, please enjoy this video of One Girl, One Drum. cyane ni ngo mashya batera intambwe batera iyindi ariko zikomeye bikomeye abantu tutanabyumva umugore avuze ingoma gute ariko ababyumva bakabyumva nicyo gituma ubona tugejeje mu rubyiruko mu mashuri bikajyana n'uburinganire I'd just like to say in, in response to that video of uh, the importance of that project in terms of really considering the cultural forms themselves and reconstruction of culture that in Rwanda it has been taboo for, for girls and women to use drums and thus um, our, our artists and our researchers in Rwanda have been exploring how to reconstruct culture so using drumming in and of itself as a way to um, position girls and women in a nuanced way in terms of how girls and women are basically on the national platform um, and exploring their needs and issues through the form of drumming to address culture, uh, gender inequality. Back to you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you so much. And it's nice to see all of you out there. Just a, a small apologies. We've been having some technical issues, partly due to I've got an unstable internet connection at the moment. So I hope you're enjoying a uh, online form of, of dance with our slides as they're um uh we, we're in the in the moment of yeah, of 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 being uh on an online side event with a few technical hitches. But here we are. 
And I think really at this point, thank you very much, Vina. Um, at this point, we'd really like to open up to all of you and just ask, do you have any questions or comments in terms of the uh, overview that we've given of MAPS work, the way we work, and importantly, are there any synergies with your own work? Um, we'd, you know, we'd really love to learn and hear from you. So I wonder if we've got any comments in the chat. Hi, Sarah. Yeah, at the moment, we don't have any comments on the chat, but feel free for anyone who'd like to speak uh, and turn on uh, your mic. Thank you. Wonderful. We'll be opening up lots more possibilities as, as we carry on. And also, if you would like to come on camera and, and chat to us, that you're more than welcome to, to do that as well as we open those up. Lovely. Uh, Lamra, I'm a health, mental health specialist. Wonderful. Thank you for, for joining us. Sorry, and I didn't catch the rest of your, your chat. Let me have a look. Um, how can I be engaged in this project? Well, we'd love to talk much more with you perhaps after, um, after this webinar and learn about your work as well. That's great to have mental health specialists joining us. Thank you so much. Yeah, fabulous. Okay, next slide, please. So uh, one of the connections that MAPS work brings in relation to the framework being endorsed next week at the World Conference on Culture and Arts Education is around thinking about developing arts education curricula and what that means. Um, and this relates to objective three in the framework document around integrating culture and arts education specifically in curricula. But we wanted to point out that the idea of living cultural heritage, adaptations to cultural heritage, is incredibly important to map, as are indigenous ways of knowing, ways of knowing that are embodied as the uh, Girin and Goma One Girl One Drum video that you just watched, that is embodied ways of knowing um, that go beyond the written word. So these are all incredibly important to map. And we'd now like to discuss a little bit of our pilot work that's happening in connection to arts education. Um, so next slide, please. Thank you so much. So I'll just hand over to Ananda to briefly outline what we've started doing in relation to our pilot, and then we'll hear from Bina. Thank you, Ananda. Brilliant, thank you. So in phase one, we were working with our um, co-investigators to explore how might we inform curriculum and youth policy. And in particular, it was found that there are child clubs in Nepal, which are mandated to be a form or format or platform in which young people can inform local decision-making processes but a lot of these child clubs were dormant. And so the MAP project basically revitalized a system and structure that was already there, um, but we're using, we were using the local cultural forms, adaptation of local cultural forms um, to be used within the child clubs for the young people to be able to express issues of importance to them and to communicate those issues within their schools um, and also to communicate those issues to decision makers. That did inform the development of local curriculum um, in a number of regions and also impacted uh, decision makers in terms of uh, local budgets, as well as some, some of the local policies. So that was highly effective. And due to kind of the national mandate in Nepal to have uh, local uh, constituencies uh, be in charge of the development of their own local curriculum, we explored how to develop kind of an arts education framework using local approaches. Um, there was a round table in September that was hosted by MAP and UNESCO in Kathmandu in which we shared our findings and resources from phase one, um, as well as began exploring how we develop a national arts education framework in partnership with Kathmandu University. 
So I believe now we can um, pass over to our partners from Kathmandu University to give an overview of that pilot, um, which has been uh, being led by Benod, if you wouldn't mind sharing that process. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Professor Ananda and Dr. Sara. So uh, thank you for providing this opportunity. Uh, as Professor Anand shared, uh, we also became a part of this uh, initiatives. And then, uh, for, so now let me briefly share the entire process that we use in this particular initiatives. Because we, I'm from Department of STEAM Education, and one of our uh, focuses is to integrations of these different forms of arts in school education. And then when I came to know about this map projects and the most importantly, the map manuals, so our interest and then this particular project interest, they, they match each other. And what, what we did, so we have five our uh, uh, research students, graduate students who are also conducting research in the universities. And then I shared these ideas with them and then they happily, uh, this, uh, they, 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 they became a part of this entire process and they all are school teachers in fact. So they are doing uh, research, postgraduate research and then they also uh, teach in schools in uh, different schools of, of Nepal. And what we did at first, we conducted this review of national curriculums, and then we identified the most appropriate contents or the most appropriate issues where these arts can be integrated. And after that, those students, and then we, we collaboratively developed those uh, uh, sample lessons, and then uh, each of our research students developed five sample lessons and there are all together 25 sample lessons. So we can see one of the sample lessons, we'll see it later. And then, so they piloted those 25 lessons in five different schools. Some schools are outside Kathmandu Valley and some schools are public schools, some schools are private schools. And then we also choose the schools in a very, uh, just uh, in, in one form to, to represent the different scenario. And then we came up with some preliminary ideas. Uh, so based on our field experiences. So this is completely uh, empirical evidence says that how arts can be integrated uh, in, in national curriculum and then how uh, the teachers and researchers can prepare those, uh, those materials and uh, apply them in their school setting. So next, uh, okay, uh, okay. You can see this. This is one of the sample lessons uh, prepared by uh, one of our uh, research students. So this is a singing tag, and then uh, this is from social study. Um, uh, from it can be useful in unit three. So the number of students, 40, age group 15, 17. And then what we did, because one of our purposes is to create very rich activities so that it can be showcased with other uh, school teachers and researchers so that other school teachers can prepare those activities by themselves. So keeping these things in our mind, so we wrote this objective of this lesson, the teaching materials that can be used and the possible classroom activities because the same thing was used in piloting. So, so in this way, we prepared uh, these 25 lessons. Uh, and then uh, I think we can move to the next slide now. Okay, so these are some of the uh, sample photo uh, photographs that uh, our students they share. So, for example, if you see in the first photograph having this uh, red background, and they are doing the activities here, they are just performing their, uh, their 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 activities. And you can see the second photograph. So they are busy in one of the deuda, this local art from, from a very remote part of this western part of Nepal, which has become very popular for several years. And but they realize that that has not been included in teaching and learning process. And then uh, the, the teachers prepared this one lessons and how uh, these uh, different uh, social issues can be discussed in the form of this deuda, deuda, deuda art. And then we have noted few things. These are our 
preliminary findings. The one is students' engagement uh, will increase whenever we conducted this kind of activities. Because uh, in a very conventional form of uh, teaching, so the students were not so much engaged, but whenever we bring different forms of arts, keeping drama at the center, so it is highly noted, noted that their engagement has been increased. So the another important aspect is this, uh, the art, it became an authentic situations for discussion because whenever they, they present a uh, different scenario in the form of art, and then that became a very rich environment, very authentic situations so that other students also, uh, they, they came up with their with, with different perspective or different viewpoints. So ultimately it, it increased their creativity uh, and then it also fosters this critical thinking. And the, on, another important thing is that normally we say uh, we need to encourage different perspective, but that situations provided opportunity to think from different perspective. Otherwise, the students cannot think in a void so that this arts-based approach became a very rich uh, uh, approach. And the next one is uh, there are several contents in school education of Nepal where the social issues are discussed. Uh, so, and there are several root causes. So behind those social issues, and then whenever we use this drama-based approach uh, in the classroom, and then so it helped them to uh, identify those different causes uh, in a very root level. And uh, so that root cause analysis, normally that I we used to discuss in university level, but uh, that things came in a school level. So I also got very surprised to know that the students, they become able to share different roots uh, different causes in roots uh, and then they also came up with different uh, solution strategy of the social issues such as gender issues and other different forms of issues so so thank you so much uh, over to you uh, professor anand and dr shara uh, okay great thank you so much um Bernard, that's, uh, I mean, it's, it's really exciting work. And I guess we're really at the stage of piloting and trying things out. Um, so it's by no means fixed. Um, and we're in the process of hearing back now from postgraduate students from Kathmandu University who are trying out those session plans of which you've seen one example and adaptations will be made. And crucially gaining feedback from the young students um, for which those pilot sessions um, are being delivered to, so that we're hoping to incorporate the students' own experience of those sessions back into the next iteration. Alongside the more national provincial thinking on arts education curricula, um, we have begun a really interesting project working with the Janaki Women's Awareness Society, also in Nepal. And this is looking at an arts education curriculum at the real local level and using Mittler paintings, um, which are a very traditional, beautiful um, form of art, of visual art. And we'll show you some pictures in a moment. But essentially what started is that the Janaki Women's Awareness Society has started a real process of working with different education bodies, relevant local municipalities, and thinking around what needs to go in a local curriculum based on guidance that already exists. So workshops uh, with predominantly young female artists and curricula experts are in the pipeline as are interviews and the design of the curriculum. Next slide, please. But just so you get a sense of what this artwork looks like, historically, um, it was used in marriage ceremonies and it was traditionally passed from, from women to girls. Uh, types of traditional art forms connected to Rama and Sita, so from religi religious texts, as well as agriculture and farming. So you'll traditionally see birds and cows. Next slide, please. But actually, Mittler Arts is developing uh, quite substantially 
And what's interesting is that young women in particular are starting to paint more incorporating the their lived experiences around them and relating to injustices that they may experience. So um, in these paintings, you'll see images connected to issues of child marriage. And also in one of the image um, that's been created, that's actually looking at, interestingly, how bringing middle arts into arts education into school. So you can see that image with um, the school children um, is, is really important through the art form itself. And what's interesting in that image is it's not just girls, it's girls and boys. So what's particularly interesting about this project is following the adaptations um, and adaptations of living cultural heritage as UNESCO refers to it is incredibly important in, in math. So thank you very much. Um, we'll stop again at this point just pause for any reflections or synergies. And perhaps, um, Vina, we can stop sharing that screen and just see if there's anyone that wants to um, ask a question or, or come forward on screen. Well, I'm not sure there might be something in the chat. Do we have anything in the chat? Hey Sarah. Um, so Hi. yeah, we have um, Aratan who uh, was kindly share um, about her project, which is very interesting. Um, so Aratan is a peace educator, um, but also work in Nepal and Malawi. So currently, I'm exploring my project, which is humor, humor for peace, mm -hmm. as uh, a fellow from the Humor Academy. So overall, I'm interested to collaborate and to get to know other creative peace building initiatives. So. Um, that's from Aratan. And also we have one question from Michelle Cannon, but kindly has been answered by Ananda on the chat as well. Um, Michelle was um, uh, uh, asking about uh, whether MAP have follow on funding from the AHRC, GCRF um, to extend and develop its work beyond this year. So that's from the chat. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, great questions. Thank you to both of you. And that work on humor sounds really, really important. Playful. Are important. Yes. Was there someone? Someone else? No? Okay, there'll be another opportunity. So what we're just going to move on to now is talking a bit more. Ananda mentioned the UNESCO Map Kathmandu Roundtable that happened last year in September. And we'd really like to explain a bit more about uh, the intergenerational dialogue aspects of that and why we think that um, they're incredibly important. So we'll pass over back to Ananda and we'll be hearing from Dewey and her reflections as well. So thank you very much. So in terms of that round table, we had our youth advisory board members um, share policy briefs that they had developed in terms of issues of importance to them. We also thought it was important to disrupt um, the usual kind of round table space. So prior to the round table, um, we explored this space, we decided to create kind of small dialogue tables, um, also to create kind of an art exhibit on the outside of, of the room, um, and also to have people engage with the artworks, as well as presenting some of the art forms live. So we had an amazing group of Doida performers who engaged participants in this call and response form of song and performance to share this um, marginalized cultural form from uh, the far region of Western Nepal. And during that performance, individuals were quite emotional uh, in terms of the importance of seeing a form that they loved and valued um, and that contained a lot of history and information. Um, with a wider community beyond Western Nepal. 
So it was quite palpable in terms of the importance of local cultural forms to embody varied histories and forms of knowledge. Um, likewise, in terms of having young people be at the floor of that event. So uh, our youth researchers not only shared the policy brief, as one might expect as being one form of communicating with decision makers, but the young people also presented image theater or a type of performance in which they illustrated through frozen images in which their bodies were sculpted into uh, images that represented limitations to youth engagement in decision-making processes, and then engaged uh, the decision-makers in the room and participants primarily, which consisted of uh, NGO workers, um, international organization workers, policymakers. We had numerous representatives from the ministries of health, of education, of gender, in attendance as well, um, to engage numerous individuals across varied sectors of society in exploring this issue of what, what limits youth engagement in the decision-making process and what can be solutions to that. So that form of dialogue was really important and quite central to that roundtable event. There was also a panel discussion in terms of some of the practices already um, undergoing it within Nepal in terms of some of the work being done uh, concerning the development of local curriculum and local approaches uh, to peace building and otherwise. Um, and then considering uh, further collaborations uh, to consider um, how might we move forward with this initiative. So post UNESCO MAP Roundtable, there were also uh, follow-up meetings with attendees in terms of considering how we might serve as a steering committee to the development of the National Arts Education Framework. Yeah, thank you so much. And part of our work in terms of dialogue is experimenting with communications. Um, a, key, a key part of us understanding art is improvisation and experimentation. And one of the areas that we are looking at is actually in terms of dialogue and communication is a policy brief, a, ca a classic policy brief. So for us, what could a policy art brief um, look like? Does art have the abilities to bring different forms of emotion, of affect and effect um, into that policy process that they serve? So they often communicate short, timely solutions. However, art has the ability to use images, symbols, ideas, metaphors, uh, and other non-verbal expressions to enable that construction of new social imaginaries. So we've been doing a little bit of experimentation and we'd love to hear if, if you're also working in this area um, and have experience with, with playing around with policy briefs. And for us, it's really, how can we infuse the values of art um, whether it's visual art or, or not, um, further. So there you can see um, some of the policy briefs actually which Dewey um, was heavily involved in working on writing um, and gathering and working with several other of the young YA team in Nepal. So do drop us um, a message if you're working on something similar because we're really keen to develop that area further. Another part of communications is, explore, is exploring um, how we use digital um, components in relation to dialogue. So we've recently um, started thinking around something we're calling talking back, which is essentially an asynchronous online web page, which you can see in the image there. And we're looking at how we can bring that asynchronous learning. In this case, we've posed a question to young people around the challenges of dialogue, intergenerational dialogue, and how they potentially see solutions. So we're hoping to bring into our next webinar, which is on the 29th of February. You're welcome to come, please do. Um, 
we're hoping to bring in the comments and the individuals that have captured on that page their thoughts and experiences and bring them live into the webinar to really play around with dialogue and communications um, in relation to the digital asynchronous and bringing it into a live webinar. Um, so do join us with that. We'd, I'd now like to pass over to Dewey, um, our amazing, one of our amazing Yars, to really think through and come back to her whole experiences in MAP, but also drawing out a bit further on some of the themes and ideas that Ananda mentioned in relation to the roundtable. So over to you, Julie. Uh, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, hello and namaste, everyone. I am Julie Adhikari, 21 years old and undergraduate student at Tribhuvan University here in Nepal. I am currently serving as an International Youth Advisory Board member and a lead for Youth Advisory Advocacy Research Forum, YAR, here in Nepal under the Mobile Arts for Peace MAP project. Today, I'll be uh, talking about uh, my team, YAR. So this team represents a group of 30 young girls between the age of 16 and 24 years from different marginalized communities here in Nepal. We aim to represent a youth voice that supports larger NGOs and INGOs to understand the perspective of youth on development and policy issue here in Nepal. So we have been initiating various programs between the local policymakers and youths in the country. The journey of YAR actually began with an intense four-week training program here in Kathmandu, where we delved into the complexities of social issues, honing our advocacy and research skills, and learning to navigate the world of arts and policy. So the four-week training modules invited experts in the field of education, research, and theater. With all the training being provided and with the team of YAR, I have led several art-based workshops where young girls tell their stories, voice their concern, and work towards possible creative solution. So I would like to give a brief example of this. Menstruation is one of the big problems girls encounter here in Nepal. While interacting with young girls from the Midwestern part of the country, I have learned that they feel oppressed because they cannot discuss menstruation in public. I can make this claim because during my most recent interaction through the project, I spoke with a girl when, when, when she was asked like what problem in her society she would like to solve to make an idealized version of the world. She said, I think the big problem of my society is that they consider menstruation to be a taboo. And the biggest issue is that they don't even consider essential to talk about it. She, however, thanked me because through the image theater activity of MAP, the community people discussed the issues which they would have never done. So image theater is basically an art-based practice in which people don't use a single word to express their feelings, but use their bodies and gestures. So without a single word being uttered, the girls during the event beautifully showcase their emotions and struggles on the topic of menstruation in front of their teachers, headmasters, ward chairmen, and other local level policymakers. The girls thought that it was a significant event because people who ordinarily would be reluctant to use the word menstruation out loud were talking about it as a social issues in their communities. So even more specifically, when the war chairman, after looking at that image theater, advised the young girls to start educating their neighbors about this problem and raise awareness in their community during his remarks, every young girl present out there felt a sense of empathy. So when we as a team were starting to bridge the gap between the youths and communities in our, then our journey, it took a significant leap and the YARS participated in the UNESCO and MAP roundtable and dialogue on culture and art education. We were active participants in the event and presented our Image Theater Act, embodying and demonstrating intergenerational dialogue in practice. This powerful act by the YARS showcased the current situation of policy discourse in the country, which severely lacks youth representation, specifically from an arts and research-based perspective from the grassroots level to the national level. We conveyed this hope that there is a seat for at every education policy table for young people, especially girls, to share their ideas and innovations concerning their future and development. Keeping up with this momentum, the YAR team also presented two policy briefs at the national roundtable organized by UNESCO and MAP, which were the fruit of all our experiences working on this activism journey. 
the whole national dialogue led to the recognition of broader art form, including cultural arts, dance, modern arts, and many more. It was linked with economy as well as a realization of thinking, the education system, and curriculum. The YAR team's main aim has always been to blend the transformative power of arts alongside fostering intergenerational dialogue to breeze the gap between generations. We have understood that a picture tells thousand words and the convenience of showing how you feel instead of using words has changed Yar's perspective on how arts and education can work together. So yeah, that's all from my side. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, um, Dewey. A complete pleasure to, to learn from you um, as well in the process of, of MAP. Um, so as we're coming towards the, the end of our sharing with all of you today, um, our final section was just to touch upon future directions and one of the strategic goals in the UNESCO framework being endorsed next week is around inclusion and equity um, and they use the language of in and through culture and that's something very much which which map does thank you next slide so we'll now hand over just to um, Ananda to speak about future directions for MAP and also what we think is particularly important um, from MAP that contributes to the framework that's being endorsed next week. Thank you, Ananda. Thank you, Sarah, and thank you, everyone. Um, even though I'm a, a part of this project, I always feel amazed by um, the really transformational work happening on the ground from our incredible participants and researchers and partners. So again, a big thank you. Um, I think it's important to pick up on that idea of culture in and through. How central to the MAP project has been the exploration of the use of arts-based methods and the great knowledge that is held and contained within cultural forms and the revitalization, the activation of those cultural forms um, and how that can be used for local and indigenous approaches in terms of mental health and well being, in terms of um, informing education, and exploring um, structures and systems in terms of how uh, children and young people, educators, artists, civil society organization workers, and decision makers can work together in terms of addressing. Uh, societal problems and finding solutions to those problems. And for that to be embedded within a both formal and informal or non-formal education sectors. Um, we have developed arts and education resources so that they're inherently uh, dialogic. So they inherently integrate uh, the learner or the user in the process of engaging with that resource um, and also considering how important co-creation and also lived experiences to, to MAP and the MAP approach. It's applied research. So we're really engaging our stakeholders um, more widely in terms of how we work together using arts-based methods for data generation, data collection, data analysis, and also dissemination of our findings so that it can reach a wider um, user group. Also in terms of thinking about lifelong learning, so having an intergenerational approach throughout our project um, and thinking about the important dynamic of learning from each and every perspective. In terms of our future, uh, the future of MAP, that we have, as I had mentioned earlier, contributed to the youth mental health policy in Rwanda. We're currently in Indonesia um, working with child forums and national structures in terms of how young people can contribute at national level to decision-making processes. Likewise, in Nepal, uh, supporting the development of local 
curriculum as well as the national arts education curriculum. Um, and also in Kyrgyzstan, uh, there's been numerous uh, performances of which uh, our MAP researchers have presented their findings um, at Parliament and also the continued engagement of our 18 MAP youth researcher clubs in schools uh, that have also informed national curriculum. We are seeking continued collaborations um, and also how we might inform youth policy and national curriculum in each country um, as we've been working with our stakeholders to drive the sustainability of the project um, through a systems approach. And we're also considering how we might continue the work of MAP through the development of a center and potential um, community venture post the HRC GCRF funding of MAP. Thank you so much. So as we come to the end and just before um, thanks and acknowledgement of all of our supporters, was there anything else um, that has provoked reflections or questions um, in any of you? We'd love to hear from you. Can you see any synergies or crossovers with your own work or interests, for example? Um, Vina, I wonder if we've got any comments in the chat? questions for us? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, at the moment, uh, I think we don't have any questions. Um, but we have some um, comments from Faustin um, stating that MAP is doing great work in different countries and um, I'm interested to get um, to connect it um, here in Kayonza. <laughs> so yeah, please Fantastic. get back with us. Well, thank you very much for that comment. Okay, so just coming to the, the final bit, we'd love to be, keep connected with all of you and learn about your own work. And really it's where the synergies and the learnings are um, that you know we're really keen to hear more from all of you. So thank you very much for joining us today. Other ways to keep connected um, are through our website and newsletter. And I think some of those links, yep, thank you, Vina, have gone into the chat. So do sign up to the newsletter if you want to keep connected. And if anyone's at the World Conference next week, please do reach out um, to me, I'll be there. We'd, we'd very much like to continue conversations and discussions. And we also have a webinar on the 29th of February. So please do uh, join us um in that and then i'll just pass back to ananda for a final thank you and acknowledgement um of of everyone and our supporters thank you so much sarah just a big thank you to sarah um and our core map team vina and amy for all of your great work setting up today's webinar and to our wonderful speakers bernard and juhi uh, Juhi, that was a beautiful, beautiful presentation um, and expression of, of the work that you've been doing with MAP. So thank you so much. Um, and to all of you for your wonderful engagement in today's webinar, we've received a lot of wonderful chats um, that has, has shared both with direct messages and otherwise of similar work and we're super excited to be in touch um, and to, to explore those synergies. So thank you so much, all of you and the wider MAP team. I see many of you here as well um, for all of your wonderful work and commitment. Thank you. Thanks very much.